If you know anything about real neuroscience, then you know that neurons are not so simple as to be perfectly described by a two-dimensional model. Real models of neurons have to have a lot more complexity built into it. So what would a real model consist of? Well, Fitsu Nagumo is really a simplification of a much larger and very, very famous model, a model that is based on a giant squid axon. Wow, that's so cool. It's based on experiments done with these giant squid axons. These are the Hodgkin-Huxley equations. This is based on some really, really very difficult, extensive experimental and modeling work done in 1952, work that won the 1963 Nobel Prize. Let's take a look at this model. The Hodgkin-Huxley model is a continuous time, 4D... Did I just spell Hodgkin wrong? Oh, man. I feel so bad about that. Well, that's the way it goes. It's a continuous time 4D model. That means we've got four variables. Four. Well, that's interesting. Well, let's see what happens. So what do we got? We have V, which is just like in Fitzunagumo, a, a voltage cross a membrane, that kind of a thing. Then we've got a couple of others that really dig into the electrochemical activity. We have N. M and H. These are all between zero and one. These are corresponding to concentrations, specifically a potassium channel activation, a sodium channel activation, and a sodium channel inactivation for N, M, and H respectively. Now, those are the variables, the things that change over time. We also have a few parameters in the model as well. So what is the model? What does it look like? Well, I've got news for you people. I'm not writing this thing down. No. Here's what Wikipedia says. And, oh man, it's kind of complicated. You've got all these different uh, constants here. W what are all these alphas and these betas? These are some kind of rate constants. You've got these G bar something constants. You've got a couple of extra different V's in there besides the one that is changing over time. And wow, it's highly nonlinear. You got some to the fourth power, to the third power, that kind of stuff. Oh, wait, we're not done yet. Because if we inspect those alphas, those betas, those rate constants, well, they really depend on V. In what manner? Oh, well, this is what the experiments led to, and this is just the beginning. There are generalized versions of Hodgkin-Huxley, which, uh, ay, ay, ay. This is really not a simple model, but it is an accurate model. And that's what Hodgkin and Huxley were going for, was do a whole bunch of experiments and come up with a model that really represents what's happening. Now, the interesting question maybe is, is this a good model? Well, that's a really interesting scientific question. One answer is yes, because it's an accurate model. And if you simulate it, it gives you that spiky behavior as a function of your different parameters. Now, notice that I'm not showing you pictures of that because it's a four-dimensional model and it's kind of hard to draw pictures of what's going on. But if you look at a graph of V, then you could see that spiky behavior. Is this a good model from the dynamical systems point of view? Is it rich? Well, you're going to have a lot of bifurcations. You're going to have some limit cycles in there. It's pretty clear that there's going to be more because... The Fitzunagumo model that had all that stuff in it is really a two-dimensional reduction of this four-dimensional model. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. But, hmm, I don't know. This is a really complicated model. And it's a really complicated model for one neuron. And, at least for most of us, there are more than one neuron in the brain. There's lots and lots of neurons. So, what do we do? Do we set up a model of a brain full of neurons where each neuron is running a model of a Hodgkin-Huxley equation and we couple them all together 
build a big coupled system like that? What if we just do it with Fitzunagumo? Hmm. Even that is going to be really difficult to pull off. We could really use something a bit simpler. And so let's think less about an accurate model for an individual neuron and more about a global approach to understanding how neurons are connected. That's what's going to come next.